You know, in Ethiopian history, Gondor had been a capital city for more than 150 years, uh, starting from the 1630s. Of course, the first capital city of Ethiopia had been Aksum. But at different time, I think you know what means Solomonic dynasty in Ethiopia. In the Bible, uh, it's written as Queen Sheba traveled to visit the Israeli king Solomon, and she had a baby from him called the first Minilik. And after he gets old enough, he became the king of Ethiopia. So then after him, all those kings and emperors who had a bloodline with him called Solomonic dynasty. So in, to in Ethiopia, they ruled for uh, about 704 years in total. I think the longest dynasty in this world. Actually, they were failing and raising at different time. So the first capital city of uh, Ethiopia had been Aksum, but at different time, as, as I told you, Solomonic dynasty was raised and fell. So when it fell, they shifted the capital city from Aksum to Lalibela. Because in the 12th century, starting from 1137 to 1268, there was a new dynasty called Zagwe. So that dynasty chose the Lalibela as a capital city. So they moved it there. Then after the Zagwe dynasty fails, almost for about 300 years in Ethiopia had been religious war in between Muslims and Christ, Orthodox Christians. So during that time, those Portuguese, they were helping the Christian side and Muslims were helped by Ottoman Turks. Uh, so during that time, Ethiopia had no more permanent capital city. And instead, there used to be mobile capital city, which moves from place to place with those kings. <clears throat> so before 1632, before Emperor Fasilidas who founded Gondor as a capital city, before he came to power, the king of Ethiopia was his father. His name is called Sisinius. And he, King Sisinius's mobile capital city had been on the northern shore of Lectana, called Gorgora, which is about 60 kilometers away from Gondor. So after he got military support, King Sisinius, from those Portuguese, he won the war, which is then with those Muslims. He defeated all the Muslims. And then right after that, those Portuguese followed by Jesuits, who were Roman Catholic priests, and then they convinced him to convert his religion from Orthodox to be a Roman Catholic. And then finally, he converted his religion, and he started to proclaim the national religion of Ethiopia is going to be Roman Catholic. Because of that, again, the major, majority of the people rebel against him and they start to fight with him. Even within a month war, more than, more than 32,000 Ethiopian people passed away. Since the majority were not from, uh, from King Sisinius, they were able to throw out King Sisinius from his power and they brought his first son, Fasilidas. The reason why they brought his first son had been mainly for two reasons. The first reason, uh, as I told you earlier, they had to keep the continuity of Solomonic dynasty. So they brought him. Uh, the second reason, uh, they have to keep, I mean, the, he was Orthodox Christian. That's why they brought him. Then Emperor Fasildes, uh, after he came to power in 1632, uh, he was looking many places to found as a capital city. Finally, after four years in 1636, he came over here and he established Gondor as a capital city for Ethiopia. The reason why it made him to choose Gondor as a capital city mainly had been for three reasons. The first reason, when you see Gondor from a distance, it's surrounded by seven chained mountains. I mean, it's a very strategic place. I mean, in military sense, you can defend or escape from your enemies. And the second reason its altitude is 2,220 meters above sea level, plus or minus 50 meters, not exact, it's not flat as you see. So it was not cold, it was not hot as today. It's getting warmer now, I can feel it. I <laughs> born and grew up here. It, so it's, it had good uh, weather condition. And the third reason, it's free from malaria. That's why uh, he brought it here over. The, <coughs> then after this, we'll see six palaces in this compound and different buildings, which was built by different emperors. So this is the first and the grandest palace in the history of this royal enclosure, which was built by the first emperor Fasilidas who came to power in 1632. With 32 meters tall and 625 meters square basement area. The, uh, the ground had more than 20 rooms, used to be as a kitchen, as a warehouse, and as a residence for the servants who were very close to Emperor Fasilidas. 
By the way, we can able to see only the first floor, which is very important to see. The rest is just closed more than a decade ago for restoration purpose. As you see, the wooden balcony starts to collapse. So they just uh, closed it. Anyways, as you see over the first floor, there are three big gates. Inside, there are three big halls. The left one had been his court and reception hall. Then the middle one had been men's dining room. And the last one had been women's dining room. Of, of course, some of the historians, they said it was because of gender inequality. And some of them put it as it is just still the culture in the countryside. If you go and see when there is like a ceremony of wedding like that, they sit separately, even inside the Church of Orthodox. Anyways, they had separate dining room. <clears throat> Over the second floor, you see a crown shaped design gate with a small balcony. Over the second floor, yes. that had been his uh, proclamation window. When he wants to address his people, he used to come through that balcony. Nobody else were allowed to come through that, only for himself. This, uh, you know, royal enclosure is very huge, 70,000 metro square area, I mean seven hectares, with different 12 gates, symbolized by 12 apostles of Jesus Christ, were opened also for different reasons. So the main gate had been that one which we used to come inside. So the people used to be at the gate and gathered under, under the palace, but for the sake of his dignity and pride, he was not expected directly to give speech to the people who were gathered under here. And instead, he used to be a spokesperson, called during that time, Mouth of the King who was acting like a spokesperson. So the mouth of the king used to be at the first floor at the middle door. Right on the top of him, emperor. So he quietly transferred his message to the mouth of the king. Say this and that to my people. And then after he heard, he shouted to the people. It was the way how he was, I mean, addressing the people. <clears throat> the third, over the third floor, you see, a crown, uh, just a small balcony with a gate. Uh, you see a staircase that had been his bedroom. Uh, for the sake of their safety, most of emperors put their bedroom on the top. Where the flag blows, the kind of fortress you see, used to be as a watching tower. From there, by the way, you can see all the way down to Lake Tana. So it's a very strategic place. The other thing what I want to tell you about this palace is this conical shape design dome towers in each corner. So one, two, three. So they hold in each corner. It was purposely built for two reasons, these dome towers. As you see from the bottom, this palace is very wide, but when you come up, it's getting narrower and narrower. So it holds this as a structure. It has no any beams inside, so it holds this as, as an enforcement, not be collapsed easily. And the second reason, as you see, there are windows. You see over the first floor in each dome towers. So it has some rooms inside, used to be as a guard room from each corner. Over the second floor, each dome tower has three windows, three times four, 12 windows, symbolized by 12 apostles of Jesus Christ, used to be as his own prayer rooms. Because, you know, in Ethiopia, uh, you know, we do have 13 months in a year. The first 12 months have, have equal 30 days, but the last one has only five days. But in each four leap year, it will be six, like your February. So each day is dedicated for different saints and angels. If you ask religious people or elderly people usually, when, if you ask the, the, what's the day today, they say, oh, today is St. George, tomorrow is St. Michael, they count in such a way. Anyways, those win windows faces to different churches. About 44 churches were built after him. So he used to be as a guard room. He was not expected directly to went and mix with those people, with ordinary people. The second building, which was built by him, had been this one. Now it gets ruined actually, these two ruined walls, you see, on the top had been arch. Uh, <clears throat> all the way up there, you see the arched gate with the wall and the roof, used to be as a coronation hall. And the third one which was built by him had been that one, with the square tower, used to be as an archive or, an, or a library. It is believed the first well-organized library in Ethiopian history. And chronicles used to be lived here over there too. So let's go first to the first floor and then we'll keep continuing to the rest. Okay. Here over it's written his coronation name. His name is actually Fasil, but in Ethiopian history before, you know, this, uh, uh, before it gets modernized, we used um, a coronation name. So when they came to power, or it could be prefix or suffix, the add and it, could, it will be 
that would be their uh, Cornish name. Anyways, Alam Sagad Fasil means the world need to Fasil, mean to show his power. Uh, he ruled from 62 to 60, 67 for 35 years. Actually, it is your calendar, Gregorian calendar. On the top, it's an ancient language of Ethiopia called Giz, where Amhari came from that. Now we don't use anymore for communication. It's left only in the church. So it says that 1624 to 1660. It says 1624, 1632. So now you are eight years younger. Enjoy. Okay, as I told you from the ground, this had been his court and reception hall. The next two are men and women standing in the room. We will see it uh, respectively. Uh, here over, let me show you. There is architectural style over the wall, which is chiseled, you see? The left and the right, they are the same. They are Portuguese architectural style. And the middle, Moorish architectural style, mean a mixed architectural style of Morocco and Spain. In general, in the medieval period, which shows the civilization of Northern Africa countries and the South Europe mixed one. Uh, and the Mughal one, those, you see both of them at the back, left and right, you see? They are Indians or the Mughal architectural style. So if you ask me why the, region, the reason they put this as architectural style, because before 1632, before Gondor established as a capital city, Gondor had been a commercial center for many traders, uh, just foreigner traders, like Armenian, Jewish, Spanish, Portuguese, Indians, the South Arabian traders used to live here because of mainly three trade routes which centered Gondor. The first one from here all the way to north, crossing Simen Mountains to Port Masawa, which belongs to Eritrea now, and then after crossing the Red Sea, which goes to Yemen, to the South Arabian countries. And the second trade route from here all the way northeast to Kart I mean west, northwest, and then after Khartoum, following the river of Nile, which goes all the way up to uh, Cairo, to Mediterranean. And the third one from here all the way down to South Momba Mombasa port, which is Kenya, and then crossing Indian Ocean to Asia. Because of these trader, uh, um, trade routes, those traders used to live here. But finally, after this emperor came to power, he let them go all those foreigners from Ethiopia. The reason why it made seem to uh, uh, just to take that, uh, to took that measure was, you know, before he came to power, as I told you, had been some religious conflict. And then after even he, he, his father took the power because of converting his religion to Catholic, then again, that uh, happened. So he thought that the reason why these foreigners were coming just to convert the religion. He told that, and then he let them go, and he started to use a closed door policy system, which lasted almost for about 200 years after him. Then finally, after Ethiopian craftsmen finished this palace, he told them to put a different architectural style, uh, as he didn't hate just to do it for the sake of the security of the country, and it used just to remind those different people, different nations. That's why it was put. When we talk architectural wisely in Ethiopia. We do have three types of architectural style. The first one called uh, Aksumite, and the second one is Lalibela architectural style, and the third one, this one, Gondorian. When you say architectural style, it doesn't mean only the structure or the design of the buildings, but also it matters the materials you used to build. So in Gondorian architectural style, mainly there used to be four materials. The first material, as you saw from outside, from the ruined uh, just walls, the stones were, the walls were built from the stone called basaltic stone. It's the basalt stone, the black stone. And to make the arches of the window, the gates, the chimney inside, we'll see, those stones are called volcanic red tough stone. They are not bricks like Egyptians. And, and the shape, they cut it and shape it. And the third material, any wooden parts for the floor, for the ceiling, uh, any wooden parts had been ebony, you know, ebony a black wood, which is very expensive now, it's, it's very hard to get even for souvenir. I think, you know, ebony and ivory, the piano, yeah? Uh, <coughs> now, actually, a little left in the southern part, but it's very hard to get it. Now, it's, this one is a restored one, which is juniper and olive, Africana. Uh, <coughs> but originally it was not. 
uh, the, and the fourth material to glue and for plastering, they used to be limestone. It's not a cement. Uh, limestone actually, it, ha it takes long process to have a sticky character. From five to ten years it takes to have a sticky character. Uh, they crush it and burn it and mix it with a big barrel in wat with water and ferment it for months and then after they dig a big hole and bury it for years. Ten to ten, um, up to 10 years, and then after, uh, after they will dig it out again and crush it again, and then after it will have a sticky character. doesn't crack easily. That's why it stands still 400 years. Actually, this is the white one, it's restored, but the gray part is still it's original. It's very light, even you can knock it. So it is typically Gondorian architectural style. The other thing what I want to tell you is, you see, you see right in, in the middle, on the top, See a star of David, uh -huh. left here, and right on the top of the gates too. That's star of David. There used to be the different symbols to show that as they were from Solomonic dynasty. You know, in uh, Ethiopian history, the last emperor was uh, from Solomonic dynasty was Emperor Haile Selassie. I think you know him recently, uh, who falls in 1974. Then after the country became communist, and then his government came to power. Uh, so when they came to power, people were believing that these people were from Solomonic dynasty, so they are deserved to be a leader or a king. So when immediately one king, when he came to power, whether he is real or not, it doesn't matter, but he had to convince the people as, as he was from Solomonic dynasty. And then the people, okay, you are deserved to be a king. We'll vote for you. But if you're not, that's why they, it's just, it was a politically strategy just to convince the people. How, what, that's why they put. This is a chimney. Actually, there are different chimneys in different uh, those palaces. But what makes this chimney different from the others, it used to warm up both dining rooms, men as well as women. At the same time, this chimney, it goes up to his bedroom. You see, there's a big, you see? There's a big hole, it goes up to his bedroom, and there are channels which take the smoke from here to different parts of the walls. So it used to be like a central heating system. Wow. This had been his uh, uh, dressing room. Um, uh, here over, you can see these stripes colors, you see? Which round this room, it's faded since, since that time, actually. It had been the symbolic representation of rainbow. So in the Bible, it has its own biblical meaning. Covenant, yeah. After the Ark of Noah, after the flood, yeah? yeah. I think you know all, all of you the story. Yeah. So it was deliberately designed this because you know it had been his dressing room before he passed any decision in his courtroom. While he dressed up, it made him to remind mercy before he going to pass any harsh decisions. So it had psychological. So deliberately designed because of that. You see, here had been a vaulted shaped design ceiling from there to here. It just collapsed during the Second World War, from there to here. So the water was collected from the roof. It, you know, during that time, the inhabitant of Gondor was estimated from 65,000 to 70,000 people. So those people used to be two rivers as a water supply, which is nearby the town. But for the royal family, it used to be this system. So you see, one channel here, the other channel is over there. They meet at this square hole, you see this square hole, to put sanders to filter the water. And the filtered water, it comes through and enters through this hole. And the water, you see, runs and refill it at the middle. And then after they refill it, yeah, that is to not be destroyed, you know, collapsed the, the roof, used to be as overflow, rectangular hole. The staircase to go down and fetch a water. During that time, they, uh, after Emperor Facilitas died, his son, his name is called Johannes. Johannes the first, not Johannes the fourth. Johannes I took the power from him and he built this the smallest palace in the history of this royal enclosure. This, the yellowy, the yellowish color one, you see? The reason why he built the smallest palace in the history of this royal enclosure, he was a very humble guy. He, you know, he came with different philosophies. He ruled for 15 years from 1667 to 1682. When he came to power, he completely changed the political system after his father. He set free all Ethiopian poor people to be out of tax. He was only collecting tax from poor peoples. I mean, sorry, noble peoples or rich peoples. So he had no enough income to build bigger like his father. Uh, for your surprise, 
he is the first emperor who came for animal rights. There was animal rights in Ethiopia by proclamation. Uh, when I said uh, just animal rights, for example, nobody were allowed to hold chickens upside down while they came to market. They had to put it in a cage. Uh, he was a very smart guy. You know, after his father, he is the first person who give equal right for different religions to, to be treated. He was very smart. But after he, 15 years, I can say in Ethiopian history, as far as I know, he's the first one, could be the last in Ethiopian history, who resigned by himself. And he went to the monastery, to, uh, to monastery around Lake Tana. And after he became a monk, he died over there. And then he just succeeded by his first son. His name is called Iyasu or Joshua. Let's see. Actually, most of them, they do have biblical names. <laughs> then after Johannes, his son succeeded the power from him. His name is called Johannes, I mean, Yas, as I told you. He ruled for 24 years from 1692 to 1706. For 24 years, he ruled. He completely changed the policy. He abdicated the political system. He started to tax everybody again, even out of Ethiopia. Uh, there was a French physician. His name is called Charles Ponce, who was able to get into Ethiopia. Then based on his diary, there is a book called uh, The Abyssinia. Uh, so in that book, he, he became the close friend of him. He be, uh, then after, uh, he wrote that diary, and then based on that diary, there's a book called The Abyssinia. So in that diary, I mean, that book, you can read that, how far this emperor was collecting tax. To north, up to southern Egypt, he was collecting tax, because they were, uh, he was uh, threatening them as you would be, as you would uh, block or divert the river of Nile. So they let him tax the southern part, to south, up to Mombasa port, to west, up to Khartoum, to east, up to Yemen, he was collecting tax from all these circumstances. He was very powerful in person. That's why many historian authors compared this palace with the Israeli King Solomon's palace. Not because of its size, but because of its beautiness. You know, the inside part of the wall was gilded with different precious stones and minerals like diamond, gold, silver, ivory, with different precious stones too. It was gilded. This is, uh, I mean, in, in actually, the, if you compare it, of course, the first one is the biggest one, but in terms of cost, this was very expensive. The king, Emperor uh, Yasu, or Joshua, and his wife used to, it's believed that they used to sit frequently in these windows. You see, this is the original ceiling. It was a vaulted. Uh, this, you see, you see this round wall from here all the way down there where we go and the, the opposite sides of the walls, that one's too, was covered by full of sand and soil. It looks like a small mound. 32 years ago was excavated by UNESCO experts. It had been a separate dining hall for this uh, prosperous emperor. He had separate dining hall. Then after uh, Yasu, he said his name is called Dawit. He built this palace, the Forza Palace, and he built this lion's cage. This, this had been a lion's cage, which was built by Dawit, Emperor Dawit. The, the reason, you know, why they used to keep the lions, as I told you earlier, there used to be different uh, symbols to show that they were from Solomonic dynasty, from the line of Judah. Even 24 years ago had been the lions. The last lions had been here. And then after, UNESCO say no, no, to put lions in a cage. This had been built by uh, Emperor Dawit, with the fourth one. So while he built it, uh, he made it to have two concert halls. Here had been a partition wall, which separated these two concert halls. The right side had been a concert hall for secular music. The left one 
with 12 fake windows symbolized by 12 apostles of Jesus Christ used to be for religious purpose. So he was very artistic keeper. He gave priority for different artists in his time, like for literature, painting, music. He was so interested in different also, in different related uh, professions. So uh, even in his time had been competition of musicians all over uh, Ethiopia. And the best one after they came over here and performed it, he gave prizes for those who performed it very well. He was very artistic emperor. Uh, that's why he was not good at politics. He only just ruled for five years. And then I just, of course, some of the historians, they say that it is a very true as he's poisoned by his own younger brother. And some of still, they argue that as it's not a, a true story because there is no any evidence they say. But anyways, he just got uh, died suddenly and then his younger brother succeeded the power after him. We'll see. These ruined walls used to be, these ruined walls used to be as a warehouse for different musical instruments, as well as, as uh, a dressing room, like a backstage before they perform it in the concert hall. Uh, I think, you, do, you, do you remember the third emperor? The third one, the first one, Fasil, who built, uh, who established Gondra as a capital city, and then after his son, Johannes, Joshua, yeah. Joshua the third one, yeah, Iyasu. He was suffering from syphilis. According to syphilis, actually, it doesn't say directly syphilis, but what's uh, written uh, documents got from the church is he got a disease which lets him to uh, like scratch, like itching and spot on the skin, so it could be syphilis. Anyways, uh, because of that, he thought that it was skin disease. He built a steam bus in that. You see that's a steam bus, or already the other groups get in. Okay, you see, it has four sections. Uh, so this is the fire section. And the next three are, yeah, the next three are, I'll show you from inside. So the servants used to go down uh, using uh, ladder. And you see Archid Hall at, right at the bottom, which is connected to the main steam bath room. So in the main steam bath room had been very big and flat stone, which is right attached on the top of that uh, arch and plastered by limestone. So wasn't, uh, weren't able to get in any smoke from here when they fired, hit it. And then after, I will show you. Mm. It had been a dressing room. <laughs> this hornless just to hang their clothes. This had been uh, a big, uh, it had been a big flat stone, which is, which was heated by, from the fire room by the Cervantes. And after it's heated, now it's getting pieces actually. So over the first floor had been a very tiny small room, used to be for elderly peoples and for those who had that problem. Because when they just pour the water from top, it's very intensive here, so the young, the young people, they used to be here, and the rest of the steam kept it and less intensive, so those people who had earth problem were able to use relaxedly from top. And then after they heated, in the middle room, in the same fashion, there are clay holes, which are used as a cooling room, and then after they cool their body, to the shower room, to the bathroom. Jacuzzi. Jacuzzi. <laughs> yeah. And maybe it was with warm water. Maybe the poor people will come with, with tube to make the bubble. <laughs> After David, his, his younger brother, succeeded the power from him, his name is Bakafa. He ruled for nine years, from 70 to 21 to 30. He was a very warrior guy. He built his own palace here over. Uh, inside, we'll see a big banqueting hall. Here in front of the banqueting hall, you see these gates used to be as for stabling for <laughs> horse. The biggest banqueting hall in this compound. Wow. Actually, the ceiling is not original. Uh, during Second World War, as I told you, the Italian used to be as a military basement. So 
they put it this cement mortar with a steel. Uh, uh, so even at the mid heights, both sides of the heights of the walls had been a wooden beam which was gilded with different precious stones and minerals, but looted at different times. But it's not before; uh, it's before uh, the Second World War. Uh, so maybe Emperor Bakafa sits here, and his wife on the other side of the table, and then. Please pass the salt. Wow. <laughs> After Bakafa, he just died from malaria. He didn't go from Gondor. Before he died, he went to the boundary of Sudan, which is very low land. After he, got, uh, after he came to Gondor, he just died. And then when he died, his son was eight years old, the second Iyasu. He was too young to come to power. So his, fa I mean, I mean, his mother came as, re as, as, as the regent of her son. And she built with her son the sixth palace, this is the first palace which had a glass window and a glass door for the first time. The rest had been wooden. So it, much, it were, had been much more decorated one, had been a balcony from left to right. Then she ruled for 12 and a half years and then after her son became 21, he took the power, but he was not wise as she was. So she kept continuing running the country for more 12 and a half years, in total for 25 years she ruled. And then after that, uh, it starts to crack the central government because those regional kings, they kept refusing to not give any more tax for the central government. So finally, in 770, collapsed. Then after that, it's called, which I told you earlier, the era of princes. Those princes, they split the land of Ethiopia and they ruled for 86 years. No more unified Ethiopia. And then after the statue guy, as, which I told you from outside, at the, right at the middle of uh, the town, Emperor Theodros reunified in 1855. And then after him, the fourth Johannes came to power. And then after him, Minili II. And then Emperor Haile Selassie. Of course, in the meantime, Zauditu and Yasu. We call him Liji Yasu. And then after the country became communist in 1974 to 1991. And then the current government came to power. The leader died about three and a half years ago. His name is uh, Mele Zenawi, and uh, we had election uh, about a, a, a year ago. Uh, every each five year we'll have election. It was a rumor who's going to come after four years, but now it's very clear. Uh, he uh, he's very young guy. He starts to get support from U.S., uh, from uh, European Union, for sure. Uh, there is, he will come uh, uh, in, and will be a, a prime minister for Ethiopia after four years.